All right, um, let's take a look at page eight here. Much different than some of the previous pages that we've done. Um, in this case, we're not looking at any sort of collisions in the sense that one object is transferring momentum to another. We're just looking for the momentum of a an individual object in and of itself here. So it's momentum of a, a really large ship, right? 4.23 times 10 to the eighth, just as a, as a review. That's a really big number. Um, I've heard multiple people say, "Do we need? Do we really need the times ten to the eighth? Yeah, because four point two three and four point two three times ten to the eighth are much different numbers. Four point two three times ten to the eighth looks like this. Um, times ten to the eighth tells me to move my decimal eight places to the right. So one, two, running out of spaces. So I need an additional six zeros to go from one to three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a really, really, really big number. Uh, the difference between 4.23 and that number is huge. All right. Um, and we know the momentum. Momentum is equal to a mass times a velocity, whether or not it's just one object by itself or like the collision problems that we've done in the previous portions of this packet. Um, but we know the mass. It's weird, it's big, but that's okay. And we know the velocity is 11.6 meters per second. So we're left with 4.9 times 10 to the ninth. Um, a check step for this one, rather than just to redo the problem and make sure that these two equal what we just found, you could solve for velocity. So plug this in for P. So this would be my check here. 4.9 times 10 to the ninth equals let's go with the mass that we're given 4.23 times 10 to the eighth then V solve for V when I go to solve for V I should come out with 11.6 or at least darn near close um, or instead of doing that we could plug in 11.6 for V and try to figure out what mass is and mass should be really darn close to what I'm given here so that would be my check step there um, I don't want to get too much into to B we can we'll talk more about it in class but this isn't the main purpose of this particular unit it, uh, it is a nice connection between the last unit and this one but um, if the captain saw the ship and had seen the iceberg a kilometer ahead and still tried to slow down it it wouldn't have made that big of a deal because there's so much momentum that this ship has to begin with that it would take a long time for it to finally come to a stop or to even get it to change direction. Um, so it would have been a, a futile effort because of because of the amount of momentum that it has to begin with. All right, let's take a look at this auto company's problem here. I frequently test safety of automobiles. Um, by putting them through crash tests and we want to see if this thousand kilogram car is sent towards a cement wall at a certain speed um, which is around 30-ish miles an hour here so 14 meters per second and we know that the impact brings it to a stop really really quick right? 0 0.08 seconds is the same thing as 8 times 10 to the second negative second sorry um, what's the average force? Remember, anytime we have a very short amount of time, we're generally going to have a really large amount of impulse that's required to get an object to stop. Of course, unless the object's just really, really, really tiny and doesn't have very much mass to begin with, or it's not really moving, moving that fast. Um, but this is a car, so it's it's heavy, it's massive, I should say. It's a thousand kilograms, and it's going pretty fast uh, I'm going 14 meters per second um, I know that it crashes the time to, to crash make full impact is 8 times 10 to the negative seconds that's where I'm getting this from and then from there I'm just solving it algebraically 8 times 10 to the negative second times F is the same thing as 8 times 10 to the neg negative second F 10,000 times negative 14 gives me negative 14,000. So you may ask, well, why negative 14? Because up here it tells me that it's 14 meters per second, but we've got to remember this is a change 
in velocity. So the reason I'm getting this negative 14 is because I'm going from a v final minus a v initial. Well, my initial velocity is 14. My final velocity is 0. Stop. So 0 minus 14 is giving me this negative 14 here. That's why I'm getting this negative. And it makes sense that it's negative in the end. We've got a negative force because this is a resisting force. Think about what's happening. The car is being resisted in order to get it to change its acceleration, in order to get it to, to stop. So negative force makes sense. Okay. If we were to decrease this time even more, that would mean that we have an even larger force of impact um, that that car would experience. All right, so last but not least on, on page 8, uh, we actually did this one together in class. Rhonda's got a mass of 60 kilograms. She's riding at 25 meters per second in her sports car when she's got a sudden slam on the brakes to avoid hitting a dog. Um, she's wearing a seatbelt, which brings her body to a stop in 0.4 seconds. 0.4 seconds is pretty long um, when it comes to some sort of crash, some to sort of accident. In this case, there's no crash, no accident. It's the seatbelt. So the seatbelt's designed to give, to stretch out a little bit. And the reason that that is is so that we increase the amount of time that it takes for us to change our momentum. Longer time, the less amount of force that's going to act upon a, a body, um, whether or not that's a, a literal body of a person or a body of just like a, a body out in space. That's um, another story. In this case, it is a, a literal person, a literal body. So what's the average force that the seatbelt exerted? Just like from above, we're going to be using the impulse change in momentum theorem. We know that there's a force across a time that's required in order to change the momentum of, of any object. So we know the time. We know the mass of the person, 60 we know that they are riding at 25 meters per second. The initial um, is that. The final is zero because she's being brought to brought to a stop. So it makes sense then that our change in velocity would be negative. Um, we're going from a, um, a velocity down to nothing. So when we go to go to solve the rest of the way, we were left with a force of negative 3750. And again, that negative makes sense because being brought to a stop should make sense for part B then, that if we we're brought to a stop in an even shorter amount of time, that that force increases greatly, like like really greatly, right? Because this is a tiny number as compared to 0.4. So everything about point uh, part B is exactly the same except for that... Um, that time and it just shows us what's the difference between wearing a seatbelt and not wearing a seatbelt there's a gigantic difference um, in the amount of force that's required in order to get something to stop in this case a, a person well if there's more force required 400 times more force required in that in this um, sense then that means that there's quite a great deal quite a, a much greater deal of injury that could occur because uh, that's what injury occurs from forces acting on us during a, um, a, a car accident.